Now you can see here is my halfway mark and I'm going to use stitch markers to mark the bars. This will make it much easier later as I am trying to Kitchener shut to make sure I don't drop the stitches at the corners. And you want to capture the last sock yarn stitch for each of these two needles. So it'll be this bar right here and then it'll be this bar right here and you're going to capture each of those in a little stitch marker. You might actually want to use your loom tool to get a hold of the bar so that you're not catching the waste yarn and splitting, splitting the stitch. And I'm going to crack halfway around until I can see the stitches on this side. I'm just going to cinch those up and then reclip my clip. There we go. And so again, looking at it from here, it's the stitches on either side of the main mark, and it's the last sock yarn stitch on each side, right? So those are the two, this one and this one. like that. Total I want to have about 10 rows of waste yarn. That seems pretty good. Cut off my waste yarn and there we go. Remove the rest of my sock from the machine. I'm going to go ahead and remove the weighted clip and the cable ring. And I can drop out my regular weight. There's my toe ready to be Kitchenered. We need to start on this side though and remove the uh, remove the setup bonnet, the waist yarn, and the ravel cord from our cuff. First, I untie the setup on it, turn it inside out. And then I use my loom tool to loosen up a few of the ravel cord stitches. Just because we did that overlap, remember? And so I don't want them to get caught on each other as I'm trying to pull it out. I usually just do a couple from each side to make sure I've got it started. There we go. And now you can take whichever end is longer, it doesn't matter, wrap it around your hand. I've got my other hand kind of bracing uh, inside here and you just pull. All the way out, just like that. Should just come right apart. You can remove your setup bonnet and then you can actually rewind that waist yarn and use it again. Thread my darning needle and then the cuff made a little pocket, you know, where we folded it over. So I really just tuck the end straight into that pocket. So make sure it's not poking out the other side. Usually try to have it poke back out right at the bottom where the seam was. And that's it. 
and you can cut that off. And that cuff is finished. Visit us at deanandbean.com and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.